Welcome to the Big Byte Academy Online. Today, we will provide you with some tips, so that you can easily find the tools in the logistics information system of SAP, that you otherwise might have missed. A lot of people think, that the LIS does not even exist. Even SAP says that it's no longer supported. But it is still there, and even though you might use BW or business objects, the LIS might give you additional information, easily accessible. You will be surprised to find out all the things you can see, using this otherwise, hidden and neglected tool. Given the size of the subject matter, we cannot explain every feature in the LIS, so let me focus on some important graphs, that are hopefully helping you a great deal with your inventory controlling and analytics. The consumption graph, which shows past inventory levels over time, is a great tool to see, at a glance, how a specific material was consumed and how it was replenished, over time. In this graph, you can analyze consumption consistency, and purchasing and goods receipt behavior. The analysis helps with the decision making for your MRP type. Then I would like to show some Gantt charts. Great analytic tools for production and production orders. Here you will see, how we can easily detect bottleneck work centers and ineffective data setups for your planned and actual lead times. Every production scheduling optimization effort, should consult these graphics, so that you get transparency into the process and basic data setup. Lastly, we will perform a dual classification. This tool helps greatly with classification and segmentation of your material portfolio, so you can easily pinpoint critical materials, and build a hit list. The databases for the standard analyses is provided by those information structures. The most important data is updated from the operative application, to the information structures. Every document that is created using transactions in the application, provides data for the information structure. Here is where the daily totals are stored, so that they can be used for standard, or even flexible analysis. We can also move around the structures, in order to change the way we look at our data and therefore display the result. This moving around is called, drill down. The drill down function allows you, to view the data that is shown in the list in more detail, and thus vary the level of detail. A drill down can be based on two criteria, with regard to a characteristic, for example, material, material group, vendor, period. The second criteria is with regard to an existing hierarchy, through which you might move your view of data. From the root of the SAP menu, we will branch into the information systems. From there to the logistics information systems. Then on to inventory management. Material. And finally the transactions that allow us to display information, from the information structures. The four transactions MC.9, MC.A, MC.B and MC.C, access the information structures and their updated values. But we also see a menu item for document evaluations. The transactions behind that menu item, are also part of the LIS, but more about that in a separate course. I am now calling up transaction MC.9. I am calling up all materials in plant 300 that belong to MRP controller 311. As per the time period, 
I want to see all transactions between January of 2012 and January of 2013. A list of all materials belonging to Material Controller 311 comes up. We could go to Characteristics Display and show not only the key, but also the description. And we could also go to the column width and set that to the length required. But for now we leave the display and pull the key figures that are important for us. We don't need the key figure consignment stock, and therefore deselect it. We will be looking for movements and see if we can find a material that has a lot of action. The number of valuated stock receipts and the number of valuated talk issues are what is of interest for us now and therefore we select it. We are sorting for the number of valuated stock receipts first. And then for the number of valuated stock issues second. So we have the material with the most issues on top. Therefore I select that material and call up the consumption graphic with extra detailed info. Stock level. Total stock. The graphic for the past consumption history shows up. We are moving along the time axis. Calling on options and curve attributes, we can change the look of the graphic. Click on the width and change it from 8 points to 3 points. After reducing the width, the graphic looks a bit more pleasing and we can start our analysis. Every down movement represents a consumption or decrease in inventory. We can therefore draw a line over the downward movement, so that we can see, how consistent our issues are, day by day. If those lines go down at the approximate same angle, period by period, then we can conclude that our consumption is consistent over the period of time we are looking at. We can also detect seasonality or low moving periods like this. We can also see the past supply, or in other words, how the receipts were brought in over time. There was, for example, a receipt of 10 pieces coming in mid-March. At the time of the receipt, there were still 17 pieces in inventory. Then there was a receipt of 20 pieces coming end of April, when we had only 5 left in stock. We can also see that their receipts come irregularly, at different times, in different quantities. Not a great sign, if we consider the fairly consistent consumption. Maybe we can automate the procurement here, by switching to a consumption-driven MRP type, like a reorder level procedure or a material forecast. Let's switch gears for a moment and look at the shop floor information system. There are lots of interesting and useful analytics and graphics there too. At this point, I would like to show you a Gantt chart, in which you can see, how your production orders are released to the shop floor, compared to how you were planning to release them. We navigate from information systems to logistics, production, material, to transaction MCPF, which gives us access to info structure S021. For plant 300, we analyze the past three months, from the 23rd of October through today. And execute the selection. We can see totals for the entire plant. There are four key figures, plan actual start deviation, target to actual start deviation, planned actual delivery deviation and target to actual delivery deviation. 
these are production order related key figures and there are many more. But let's drill down to the materials overview first. Now we can see the key figure values for each individual material, meaning that we can see the cumulated values for all the production orders, to that material, within the selected period of 3 months. Now I would like to add some key figures to the report. I therefore pull up the key figures window. And select the key figures. Actual lead time, which is the time the selected production orders have spent on the shop floor, including waiting and queuing time. I also would like to see how much scrap was posted for a specific material. And I would like to compare the actual lead time with the planned lead time from my master data setup. Pulling the key figures into my selection pool. And hitting enter. Displays the according key figure values in my report. Next I want to sort the list to the actual scrap, meaning that the material with the largest amount of scrap, will come to the top. Then I mark material 102100 and click edit. Up come my options for analysis and this time, we find also the option input output diagram and Gantt chart. Upon selection, we can see the input output chart. As you can see in the legend, this chart shows us a graphical representation of the variation between actual and planned start and end times. But there is a graph, that I like much better than the input output diagram. After selection of the same material, we call up the Gantt chart. The Gantt chart displays four production orders, all belonging to material 102100. After pulling up the legend, we can see that we are looking at the lead times as they were planned, and compare these to the actual lead time, start and end dates of the production orders. To get a better view, we switch from daily display to weekly display. And can now see all four orders, with the deviation, in our window. Strangely enough, all actual lead times are shorter than the target, or planned lead times. In one case the order was started before it was actually planned, and in the other three cases, the orders were started much later. Pulling in other key figures, like release dates, execution time, or waiting time, we can analyze how much non-value added time our orders waste, and we can, according to lean principles, think about the possible introduction of a pull system. If we actually go through such an optimization, we can easily compare the before and after effects, of such an initiative. In dual classification, you perform a segmentation of your material portfolio according to two key figures of your choosing. The LIS builds a matrix, using these two key figures values, to list materials in various segments. This way you can build hit lists for further analysis. As an example, in purchasing you can divide materials into classes for the key figures, number of order items and order value. This illustrates relationships between the key figures, and helps you to detect possible problem areas, such as materials with a relatively low order value, and a high number of order items. Materials that lie in the upper classes with regard to both key figure values are not critical. Or in production, you can classify work centers with regard to the key figures, available capacity and capacity requirements. This helps you to detect relationships between both of the key figures, and possible problem areas, such as work centers that have high capacity requirements, but only have a minimum available capacity. Work centers that lie in the upper classes with regard to both key figure values are insignificant. Let's have a look at how you build the dual classification. Back in MC.9. First, I want to extend my report by another key figure. I am looking for the average valuated stock value, and want to classify that key figure against the number of valuated stock issues, which I have already in my list.
now I have both of my desired key figures in my list, and I can call up the dual classification from the edit menu. Accordingly, I select average valuated stock value and the number of valuated stock issues. Here is the dual classification. Average valuated stock value is now classified over the number of valuated stock issues. To the left you can see the class limits of the issues, and across the top you see the class limits for the average value. These limits, and the number of classes, we can now customize. Instead of 6 classes, I want only 5. For the number of issues, I leave the classes as they are. For the average value, I change the lower boundaries to 0 and 50. In the dual classification screen, we can now select any segment, and list the materials which belong to that segment. In this case, I want to list the two materials, which have less than four issues within our period of examination, but have a high average inventory value. We are looking at two potential problem materials. Especially the second on the list, which had only two issues, but we keep an average of $2343 in average inventory. This concludes our course, List Graphics and Analytics. Thank you very much for listening. Next will be document evaluations and exception monitoring.